You know, my first semester at Berkeley, I taught uh, two courses. I taught the data structures course and the computer organization course. People said, how can you teach both? Data structures is taught by the software faculty. Computer organization is taught by the hardware faculty. Are you a software person or a hardware person? I said, I'm a person. That's what's needed is this pigeonholing has to go and the student has to have a better foundation across all the layers. I went to graduate school actually to study microwaves because I was a co-op student at Northeastern and my co-op job involved uh, dipole antennas and I uh, thought I would carry on graduate school in microwaves. Um, so I went to the place where uh, microwaves was most preeminent. And when I got there, they insisted I take a course in something other than my specialty. And so I took a course in switching theory, which at that time we thought was the soul of computers. The professor, Don Epley, was just very excited as a great teacher and wanted us to learn, charismatic, always into the students. And I balanced that against these guys who were not quite that way in the microwave faculty. And by the end of my first quarter, I had turn the whole thing around and end up doing my PhD in uh, uh, the essence of uh, what then was actually logical primitives for building computers. So Professor Yale Pat is perhaps one of the most influential figures in uh, modern computer architecture. He's had an influence not only in the architecture of large computers that perhaps Google would use in a data center, but even the computers that are in modern cell phones. So in those days, we had arrived at the notion that a, a logic function or switching function, which is the lowest level of control of the processing, should be built out of circuits which were uh, one transistor per functional unit. And my thesis said, this is silly. We have a piece of silicon. Why should we restrict ourselves to one transistor when if we put multiple transistors on that one piece of silicon, we can get a lot more work done with a lot fewer pieces of silicon. So I came up with a logical primitive that is a basic building block called the WOS module, made up of three transistors and cut the cost of number of packages and reliability of the corresponding pins by more than half. I was going to take a job in industry because, you know, people who can do, people who can't teach. And so I had no desire to teach. And then at the last minute, this guy from Cornell, uh, Fred Jelinek, stumbled into my cubicle, said he read my thesis abstract and wanted to interview me at Cornell. And I said, I'm not... Why would I ever want to teach? And he said, come out for an interview anyway. So I did, got an offer, and now I had 10 offers. And uh, so when you go from 10 to 9, 9 to 8, 8 to 7, that's easy. So you get to 2. When you get to 2, when you throw one away, then you got the job. So it was Cornell and one of the industry offers, and I back and forth every one night I'd say, I'm going to go to IBM. Next day I'd say, I'm going to go to Cornell. And finally, I decided on our Cornell. All my friends said, we knew that you were going to do that because that's what you should do for a living. And as I've learned, you know, uh, people who can do, people who can do more, teach. Uh, the techniques that he and his students have come up with are fundamental techniques in how we execute programs and how we speed up the execution of programs. Probably the most important early thing I did was the HPS microarchitecture, which I did. I, I was a visiting professor at Berkeley for nine years, actually. Some visitors don't know when it's time to leave, apparently. 
And I had three fantastic students, uh, Wen Mei Hu, who's now an endowed chair at Illinois, uh, Mike Shebenow, who is now a uh, director at Samsung, building an incredible GPU chip. He uh, did FAMI uh, a couple years ago. And Steve Melvin, who's never wanted to work for anybody other than himself. And the four of us together derived the HPS microarchitecture, which uh, embraced a lot of things. The out of order execution of Thomas Suo, combined with the ability to retire instructions in order, um, using what we call uh, a result buffer, which later Guri Soe renamed the reorder buffer. I've had students that have made incredible contributions. In fact, if you ask them, they'll probably tell you that I'm irrelevant. They're so fantastic, they could do it with anybody. And maybe there's some truth to that. The best thing is to mentor them carefully so you don't smother them. Uh, that is an important function of a professor. I don't think it's the most important function. I think the most important function is teaching. I teach three courses at the university. One is my freshman course. And I try to convince, usually unsuccessfully, senior faculty that if you will teach the freshmen and get them started off right, you might actually be happy with what you see when you see them again in the senior course as far as a graduate student. I was told once by somebody who reviewed my book that a good student will always want to know what's underneath the hood. And he was absolutely right on target. Uh, students writing in Java have no basis for understanding what they're doing, and so they memorize patterns and hope that they'll be successful. Memorizing is not learning. If you teach at a high level and try to work your way down, you're forever memorizing until you get to the bottom. My approach is start at the bottom. You start with the transistor as a wall switch, and you keep adding and building and building, continually raising the level of abstraction. The student doesn't have to memorize. The student is understanding what's going on because he's building on what he or she already knows. And the approach is just 180 degrees out of phase with Java, and uh, I think the right way to go. Uh, that book uh, came about because when I introduced the freshman course at Michigan, the only one who could teach it was me because it was different from the conventional nonsense of starting with Java. And uh, so every semester I was teaching the freshman course and the graduate students complained. So I had to write the book in order to enable other people to teach it. It was supposed to be written, co-authored by Kevin Compton, the guy at Michigan who developed the course with me. But Kevin finally said, I just can't do it. And so Sanjay, who had been the first TA for the course, I offered it to him. And of course, you know, he's a graduate student. Wow, I get to write a textbook. And so yes, Sanjay and I wrote that book uh, together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Yale Pat. I think there is no one more worthy of this award than Professor Pat because of his fundamental contributions not just to computer architecture, but also his passion for the students, for teaching, for uh, mentoring graduate students. It's almost without precedent. It's absolutely absurd that we're not doing serious computer education at the uh, K-12 level. Uh, my, my freshman textbook, which you mentioned already, could easily be taught in the high school. Uh, I'm not sure how far down in the high school, but certainly we, ha we should be able to uh, we should be able to have the student in the freshman year already have that knowledge, and we don't. Uh, that's a problem with the AP people. It's a problem with the I guess I would put put some of the blame on the National Science Foundation that they're not taking a hard look at what the correct computer education we should be giving these kids in high school. Professor Pat is not only a well-known computer architect, but he's also a true original person. He's someone who, once you meet him, you will never forget him. He is someone who is passionate about what he does. He's someone who is smart and intelligent and articulate. 
He's someone that will change how you think after talking to him for just 10 minutes. Professor William K. Winville, I wish he was still alive today to see me uh, receiving this award. Uh, Bill Winville, my professor in graduate school, with him it was all about students. He didn't do what was best for him, he did what was best for his students. I remember when he formed the Engineering Economic Systems Department, and I said, Bill, I'd love to come over and be a graduate student in your department. He says, no, 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 you're a double E student, and you're going to one of the best double E programs in the world, and you've passed a qualifying exam, I am not going to let you give that up to come and work for me. He is someone who feels passionate not just about engineering, not just about improving technology, but about mankind, about making this a better world. Maybe we have a shot at some of these really serious problems like uh, predicting tsunamis so that we can predict the tsunami before it hits, curing cancer, which right now may take I don't know how many hundred years of computer time, but if we can get that number down to something reasonable by having all these cores, by reducing all this latency. I have no idea where we're going to be 20 years from now, but there's a lot of challenges out there and um, it's good that I'm still young and active and can help in making at least a little some of it happen.